All right. Thank you so much, guys. So, blockchain for good. Um, I cannot yet see my screen. All right, here we go. Towards a more sustainable world. So, we can agree that one of the most or the biggest concerns at the moment in sustainability is actually greenwashing. So, are those claims, claims actual? Are they like what we want to do? Or is it like correct? And some of them are not much. As we and the nice thing is, kind of, we can put ESG and all the sustainability context and combine it with technology. One option is blockchain, distributed ledger technology, but we also have IoT and other things like AI that we can introduce as well. Today we're going to look into two initiatives. One is the Carrot Foundation project and the other one is Greener Token. Both are based in Switzerland but have operations in Brazil. So we start with Carrot Foundation, which is a uh, blockchain network that is looking into resourcing and kind of recycling of organic waste. In fact, if we look at our planet at the moment, we have some issues in the sense that most of what we produce in a rather short term lands on a landfill or a dump somewhere. So we don't recycle a lot. And our resource consumption will increase over time massively, while at the same time the waste generation will also increase. So what does it bring us? Well, our greenhouse gas emission will skyrocket and kind of we have an issues in terms of temperature on the planet. Yet we could bring a pretty easy solution to most of that by just doubling our recycling rate. And this is what we aim at with Carrot Foundation. Like if we could address something like 85% of the issues by just doubling our recycling rate in the next 15 years. And a circular economy is an effort of network, so it's a lot of providers and, and participants part of it. So we are part of it, but also like the recyclers, government authorities and waste generators and treatment facilities. What we can do here is um, we can help and incentivize the reuse and the recycling of organic waste, for instance. What we did is um, we have the, the idea of tracking, you see that on the below side here, real world activities and bring them with some APIs, and record them on a blockchain, certify the recovery and recycling, measure the environmental gains that we have on it, issue carbon credits and as the like um, people mentioned before there's also the option to tokenize them and what we do then is with a smart contract we do an automated payout of a fraction of it to every participant that uh, led to these carbon credits this is how it looks like on this side of the screen and if we go a little bit more in detail we can see that if we start the process with a waste generator, which could be like a household that dumps things out of their um, doors. Then there would be someone picking it up, like with a truck, and bringing it to a professional composting facility. And if you do that, you have much less greenhouse gas emission as if you would just dump it in a landfill somewhere. So the difference is something that you can capitalize on as a greenhouse gas emission saving or a carbon credit. And if you tokenize that, you can also leverage the properties of blockchain, meaning that you can do some smart contracts with an automated payout, have a very lean backend, super efficient processes. And everything becomes interesting in the sense that you could use like USDC in the beginning, but afterwards issue your own proprietary tokens, which was the plan here. So there are some advantages in doing that. I'm not going through them because uh, probably today it's a bit, uh, it's a bit packed. I just want to say that this uh, very minimal cost to verify because you can use blockchain to really look into the certificates and as we mentioned also kind of it's important that the claims can be, uh, can be made transparent and can be checked by people. And if we look at the addressable market, I mean it's really not that big but a couple of billions already and I mean we can build on from there starting from organic waste and then go into glasses and other type of materials. And I want to stress 
the, the point that this is actually really a, a collaborative effort. So it's not just about the organic waste producers, kind of the households or so, but it's also really everyone in the chain. So we have the producers, we have the treaters, we have also like the packers and the holders, so everyone that is part of it. And with the Carrot Foundation, we want to establish that everyone gets a share of it when we earn it. If you want to read more about how we want to certify these carbon credits and how we want to issue them, um, you can read, I can move out of the screen, um, the bold recycling credit is a manifesto that we wrote and it's published. And the objective is to increase by 90% the circularity rate within 15 years. So you will see if that's, if that's going to happen. And the second project which I want to present today is Greener Token, which is also based um, with operations in Brazil. And here we are protecting the forest in Brazil. And as we can see, like 50% of the forest that is disappearing in the world it actually disappears in Brazil. It means 1.5 million of hectares already disappeared. As you may imagine, the Amazon forest is one of the treasury of our world. And if you see at the greenhouse gas emissions, I mean in absolute terms, like Brazil is number five on the world. And when it comes to forest specifically, then it's the number one polluter on the world. So is Brazil just a part of the problem or also part of the solution? And there is the nice thing, Brazil can also be a part of the solution because actually it's really cheap to bring nature-based solutions um, down there. So not just because the land is cheap or kind of because labor is cheap, but because you have a lot of factors that come together and makes it ideal. So it could be actually one of the solutions for greenhouse gas problems in our world. If you look at the market size, I mean, it could be something like one trillion um, in the upcoming future. And we expect that kind of nature-based solution will be one of the main drivers uh, for reducing greenhouse gas emissions in the next years. And Brazil could actually be leading the pack in the sense that it could be the number one nation doing that on the planet. So besides an interest of the investors and the public in this area, kind of we also see that the carbon market is growing on a year-by-year -year basis and it's getting bigger and bigger, which is interesting. And I think it's good because this brings money back that we can use uh, for a good purpose. So what Greener is doing is we are preserving the forest and besides that also supporting the indigenous people living there with transparency and governance. So how does it work like actually at the moment when we look, we talked as so kind of some colleagues uh, this morning talked about that carbon credits are a very fragmented market at the moment and very of them have like bogus claims or it's not really clear what they have below or kind of if it's really underlying it's correct. So, I mean, it's a new way of funding nature in the sense that um, it, could, it has some potential, so it's not just bad. And um, our methodology was done by the University of Sao Paulo. So it's highly scientific. It's partially published in Nature, um, the scientific magazine. There will be, I will show you some, some audits as well. And that's a kind of, um, when it comes to it's, it's a regenerative finance uh, initiative. And so what it's about is like we have four main elements. First, we are addressing one of the concerns is like, okay, we put everything on blockchain so it's transparent. But then also like there was one concern about can you sell the same token twice? So kind of can you double it? Well, we prevent that by having soul bound tokens. So it just... Uh, you get it in one wallet and from there you cannot move it anymore. So you avoid having this double spend or double usage uh, solutions. Okay, <laughs> crazy weather today. <laughs> so uh, what verticals are we tapping in from a, US, uh, from a SDG perspective? So we want to look into preserving life on land and then uh, kind of supporting the quality of education and having the people that live there. So we do that by partially devoting like 5% of the proceeds um, to local indigenous population. And we 
kind of uh, help them with the money to build more sustainable cities and kind of and um, get decent work conditions. And if we look into more on the ground, so kind of we really want to increase the bio and preserve the biodiversity that we have uh, in the part of the Amazon. So what's happening is that there is a part of the forest that greener preserves and it gets protected against wildfires and um, kind of human interaction. We also um, take down all, inf all the information within the single greener token when it's uh, minted. As you can see here, there's like a structured uh, structure for the token. So really you already know kind of uh, for which year, to which year this uh, specific token relates to when it comes to carbon um, greenhouse gas emission reduction and I mean just kind of to, to guide you through the whole story so if we start by preserving a piece of land and we do due diligence on that so kind of we check on everything and uh, we have like a specific um, in Brazil there are specific government requirements for issuing a carbon credit we do that with the University of Sao Paulo, as I mentioned, and then we have a, that's the surface that we currently have, it's like a 150,000, but I wanted to show you that kind of in a, on a monthly basis, we have a satellite imaging taken of, of the area that we're preserving. Um, this is audited by KPNG. So again, we want to be against greenwashing and we have our claims legitimated by one of the big four auditors. We also have like an audit on the financial side, which is done on a yearly basis by PwC, um, as you can see here. And we use blockchain to support the traceability and in the end issue the soulbound token. One token equals one ton of CO2 saving. And we calculate that by looking backward, kind of so we have, we are preserving forests and we actually look at what has happened in that forest in that time. So there are people from the university teams that go into it, like the map a 2,000 square meter space, and they divide it down into 100 by 20 meters uh, smaller lots, and then they count every plant on it, they measure the size of the circumferences of the plants, of the trees, um, they count down, okay, what, uh, what number of animals and the species of animal that are in there, look into preserve, taking out some samples from the soil, so kind of from the surface, but then also underground, like until one meter down, and they will take some vertical samples, but then also horizontal samples at the different uh, depths. depths. Um, and then you take everything of that, kind of you bring it to the laboratory, and you measure exactly the carbon that you still have in there. Um, yeah, and of course we work together with Fireblocks and other institutional great players just to be on the very safe side. If we want to summarize the journey, I mean, we can start on the top left, and this is actually where we do an area and designate it, and we work on kind of on the due diligence and kick off the process. We do a study of it with the university, then we do monthly audits of it because we want to preserve it over time. Um, we have PwC then looking into when, it, uh, when the carbon credit is issued and kind of it's already in the fund. Uh, we bring it on, on the Ethereum network. We create the soulbound tokens. Um, it's in the custody of Fireblocks just for, uh, for the corporates that want to buy it. Um, we still do like the, the monthly audit or can, uh, with the satellite imaging. And uh, in the end, uh, the, the user, can, uh, user companies can buy it. What we also offer is on the other side is if we have like bigger events, such as the Formula One Grand Prix in Sao Paulo, um, they can estimate with our solution what is actually the CO2 emission. I mean, it's just an estimate, but we try to do it as accurate as possible. And then you can compensate exactly that amount that you need for the specific event. All right, so you can do it like, as I told you, on the compensation for the past, which is uh, what most people do, and then we can also do some future compensation. What we do is we support uh, the local indigenous population there. 
so the uh, the Aripuna, and we give them. A, I mean, they take care of the lot actually, so kind of the forest that is there. So they check that no one comes in and does any harm, kind of from a human perspective, so that they dump, don't dump waste or kind of they burn down the forest, which is. Um, a two-sided game because they know that if they preserve the forest, they will actually get the proceeds out of it once the the green um, the carbon credit are issued. Yeah, and as I mentioned, one of the projects was like the offset of the Formula One Grand Prix in 2022 and 2023. <laughs> okay, we have a lot of rain here. Um, what we do is that we actually have like, we made a calculation in the beginning. We do a submission of the inventory of what exactly, I mean, what the items are that actually produce greenhouse gas emission. Uh, we do a validation of it and then we have the payment process before we activate the soul bound token so that they cannot resell it and it's just bound to them for, the, for uh, basically forever. All right. Um, I want to leave some time for questions. And so far already, thank you so much for your attention. Thank you, Stefan. Do we have a question here? Okay, sorry. So, here, here. Okay, so we can... <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Totally kind of skipped in line here. Um, I just have a general question as somebody working in the nonprofit kind of climate world and wanting to understand more about how we can leverage the power of crypto to also like, you know, finance these sustainable initiatives like you do. Do you have any advice, especially for like, you know, we're from Germany, right? This is a very, not a very digital, a little bit of a conservative market. Do you have any advice for us, grassroots kind of folks, on where to begin? Because this is a wonderful success story, and um, um, yeah, I would love to try something like that myself. <laughs> okay, thank you so much for the question. So, yes, I mean, there are different ways how you can capitalize on new technologies and how to use it. As we've seen here, um, we, we, wanna we leverage soulbound tokens just because that's the, the idea of having um, a pair which is always the same, kind of between a buyer and the exact token, or then the offset of that. And you need a concept, so I mean, there are ideas of, uh, for instance, of dynamic NFTs, where you would say that the more you invest in something, the more beautiful your token becomes. Um, so, like a token of appreciation of, of the thing that you're doing. Um, then, of course, you can capitalize in the sense you can use tokens as an alternative to shares or just to have a fraction of an investment of a certain thing. Um, and I think you can also capitalize like on events in the sense that you would have like some unique events um, where you then keep track of that by receiving an NFT of that specific occasion. Um, I think there are many ways how you can actually connect or, or use a blockchain for, for these initiatives. Thank you so much also for sharing this best practice. It's very inspiring. <laughs> Thank you so much for the question. Thank you. There was one more question. Okay, so any more questions? <laughs> I ruined it. <laughs> if not, you can always reach Sylvan somewhere here, right? 